below and please don't forget to like subscribe to the channel this is what gets us to go ahead and give you guys this content so don't just watch the video and not hit the like button man show some love and also share it you know what i mean let's hope help grow this page all right so go ahead and make sure you do that and uh good luck on that speed bag boxing like that's it we're done with multiplication now we've shown that the cuts have the least upper bound property and we've shown that, that they're a field we still have to show that they're an ordered field and then we will have what we wanted all along which is an ordered field with the least upper bound property so step seven is a uh, show that r satisfies the requirements for an ordered field okay number one so we've already shown that if x plus y is less than x plus z, then y is less than z. Now, number two is just that if x, y is greater than zero, and x and y are elements of R, oh, I'm saying it backwards, wait. If, if x and y are elements of R, and x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, then x, y is greater than zero. So we're just saying that if x and y are greater than zero, then uh, x, y is greater than zero. But there's nothing to prove here because we already showed this. This is just multiplication of positive numbers. This was what we've been, we started by showing the, mul the, um, multiplicative ax the multiplication axioms for positive numbers. That's the whole point, that if they're both positive, then x, y is going to be positive too. That was just closure of the positive elements of R. So we're done. We've already done this one. We already showed this one. So that's it. And that's, that's the end of showing that so we have now completed the proof that R is an ordered field with the least upper bound property. We're done. We just have two more things to do in order to finish what we were looking at. Because the other thing is, so we, we have a set that is an ordered field with the least upper bound property. But what we need to do is show that the rational numbers are a subset of R that they're actually an extension of the rational numbers. We still have to show that, that the rational numbers can be seen in here in some way. So step eight just shows how we're going to do it. We associate for every element R in Q, the set R star, which consists of all P in Q, such that P is less than R. So obviously R is a cut because this is just for every rational number, this is everything less than, than that number. It's obviously a cut. We've gone over that a hundred times. So R star is an element of R. What we have to show is that these cuts satisfy the following relations. A, that R star plus S star equals R plus S star. B, R star S star equals R S star. And C, R star less than S star implies both ways, if and only if R is less than S. This demonstrates that the set of R stars is isomorphic to the set of Q's. So if you see, what we're doing is associating all of the properties that make it an ordered field. So we have R plus S, this is in Q, and this is in R, right? Here, this is in Q, this is multiplication in Q, this is multiplication in S. This is order in R, in Q, this is an order in R. I said, this is a multiplication in Q, this is multiplication in R. So we show that that the same operations go back and forth between R and Q and R star and R. So to prove these, to prove A, choose a P element of R star plus S star. Then P equals U plus V, where 
u is less than r and v is less than s, right? Because these are both cuts. So this is just the definition of the addition of two cuts. So in that case, then p is less than r plus s, which says that therefore p is an element of r plus s star. So if it's an element of the addition in the reals, then it's an, it's, it's an element of the additions in rationals. That only went one direction. We still have to do the converse. Okay, there's no way I'm going to be able to fit this here. So let's do this over on the next page. Okay, so this is the converse. So suppose that P is an element of R plus S, then P is less than R plus S. A lot of boring math later. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, I wrote this wrong. This should be R plus S. We're starting with something that's in R plus S star, and we're showing that it is then in R star plus S star. So now choose T such that 2T equals R plus S minus P. Now, does this look familiar? By this time, you should recognize this. This is, has Rudin's fingerprints all over it because this is what he does. He likes calculating with the algebra and he loves taking a distance and then slicing it in half. So this is a number that's in R star plus S star and P is some element of that. This is sort of, this is the least upper bound of, of this. So P is some distance less than. So if we have, here is R plus S, P is down here somewhere because this is the cut. So this number is the distance between them. So he's naming that to be 2T. So then T is just, is half of that. It's half of this distance, okay? T's not there, but, the, but it's half of the distance between them. So let R prime equal R, plus, R minus T and S prime equal S minus T. So R and S, R plus S is at the limit and we're subtracting a little bit, right? So we're staying above P, but a little bit less than, than the limit of the R plus S cut. So that means that R prime is an element of R star and S prime is an element of S star, right? So because we're just taking a little bit less for each of them. Then we also have that P equals R uh, prime plus S prime because R prime plus S prime equals R minus T plus S minus T. That equals R plus S minus 2T. And we're given that 2T equals R plus S minus P. And this is P. So we just have that if you subtract, add P to both sides, subtract P 2T from both sides, and you have that P equals R plus S minus 2T. So that means that, that means that R prime plus S prime equals P. That means that P is an element of R star plus S star, okay? And that's what we were trying to prove. We started with, well, what we're showing is that R star plus S star equals R plus S star, right? We're starting with something that's in R plus S star, and we're showing that it is then in R star plus S star. First, we showed that if you start with this, you can get to this. Then we were showing that if you start with this, you can get to this. Okay, that's A. So B works the same way with multiplication instead of addition. So the last thing we have to show is C, which is that, that R star is less than S star if and only if R is less than S. Okay, so again, we have to prove it both directions. So, so if R is less than S, then R is an element of S star. Then there is a P element of S star. There's an element, so R is in S star. So then there's an, a P in S star such that P is not 
in R star. This is because if R star is less than S star, then there's gonna be, there has to be some space in there. So we can pick a P that's actually not in R, but is in S. Okay, so. Right, because we started with this one and then we showed that R star is less than S star. So to go the other direction, if we start, we went this way first. So if, to go the other direction, if, R star is less than S star, then there is a P element of S such that P is not in R, right? Because now we're starting here. So there exists a P that's gonna be not in R, but is gonna be in S, okay? That means that R is less than or equal to P is less than S, so R is less than S. So that's starting with this, we prove this, starting with this, we prove that, that's it. That's C, that's it. So we're done showing that if we let R star be the cut that for each R in Q, then we've shown that the R stars have the same math at the same structure as the R's in Q. So the last thing we have to do in order to demonstrate that Q is a subset of R, not just subset, a subfield. So for this step, Rudin, there's really nothing, there really isn't a step nine. What he, what he says is that when you have those three, uh, those three properties that R star plus S star equals R plus S star, R star times S star equals R S star, and so on, that shows that the rational cuts R star in R preserve sums, products, and order. And this is uh, expressed by saying that the field Q is isomorphic to the ordered field Q star whose elements are rational cuts. Now, of course, R star is not at all the same thing as R. R star is a subset of rational numbers where R is just a number in Q, right? So they're not the same thing, but they're isomorphic. With the plus and times and ordering, they work the same way. They have the same structure. So they have the same arithmetic in the two fields. And it is this identification of Q with Q star that allows us to regard Q as a subfield of R. So that's it. And that was the last thing that we needed to show because we needed to show two things. First, we were showing that, that the cuts make an ordered field with least upper bound property. Then we were showing that that field contains Q as a subfield. This is what we mean by that. And so, by the way, this, this thing, can, talking about Q as a subfield of R, the same thing is working when we say that R is a subfield of complex numbers, or even integers are a subfield of rationals. It's the same kind of embedding of the, the smaller system inside the, or the, inside the bigger one. So, now, we're going to start on what, to me, is sort of the, uh, the climax of this, something that, as far as I can tell, is not on YouTube anywhere, which is the, the, an amazing thing about these cuts is the real numbers, it's not just that such a field with a least upper bound property exists, but that any two ordered fields with the least upper bound property are isomorphic. So in other words, what we just did, we were talking about real numbers. We don't have to do anything else. There aren't two sets. There are not two different constructions that, that uh, satisfy the criteria for an ordered field uh, with the least upper bound property. This is the only one there is. So what I'm going to show next in the next section is that that's true. And it's a very interesting proof because we start by constructing natural numbers and then we construct integers and then we construct rational numbers and so on, and we embed them into the reals one by one until we've shown that there's only one possible set of real numbers. So that is it. We are done with this section, and next time we'll show that this is the only one, and then we'll be moving on to uh, multivariable calculus and then complex numbers. Thank you.
Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe and please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.